Hey there, welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be going over a proof to the AMGM inequality using Cauchy induction, which is also sometimes called backwards-forwards induction. This proof is the only one that I know that doesn't have any calculus. First of all, what even are AM and GM? AM means arithmetic mean, which is the sum of all the numbers divided by the number of numbers, and GM means the geometric mean, which is the nth square root of the product of all of the numbers. And I'm going to suggest the idea that the arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean, if all the numbers are positive. The AMGM inequality is important because it's necessary to prove tons of other things. It seems like something that a lot of, problem, that a lot of tests like to have problems about to manipulate the AMGM inequality to prove other cool things. So here's what we're going to do in this video. First, we're going to prove it for two numbers. Second, we're going to explain mathematical induction. Third, we're going to explain Cauchy induction. And fourth, we'll use the Cauchy induction. I'm going to assume that if you haven't heard of the inequality before, this seems kind of unbelievable. And I didn't really believe it back when I first saw it. But let's change that by first just proving it for two numbers. We'll start with the thing we want to prove. a plus b over 2 is greater than or equal to the square root of ab. We can square both sides because square roots are annoying. And then we can do the square on the numerator and the denominator separately. And then we can multiply by 4. And then we can distribute out the a plus b squared to get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And then we subtract 4ab from both sides. And then we factor this back up to get a minus b squared is greater than or equal to 0. Um, and this is true because all squares are greater than or equal to 0, so we proved it. Note how this only works if a and b are positive because of all the squaring and square rooting that we're doing. A lot of the time you can just stop here, but or maybe prove it through three numbers too, because that's all you'll probably end up using realistically. However, for this video we want to prove that this is true for all n, so we have to go a little further. This wasn't so hard, but proving it for all cases will be, so we'll need to use a different tool, mathematical induction. If you already know standard mathematical induction, skip ahead to the next section, or Cauchy induction. If you don't, let's take a step away from the specific problem and I'll explain what induction is. Let's use an example first. We'll prove that the positive, all positive integer powers of 3, 3 to the n, are odd. This is pretty obvious, but it's just an example. We'll start by showing it for the first case, called the base case. And then, we'll prove that if a previous term is true, then, then, then the next term will be true, which is called the step, or the inductive step. You can think about this like the domino effect. Given that we know these two things, we know that it works for 1, or 3 to the first power is odd. And since it works for 3 to the first power, it works for 3 to the second power. And since it works for 3 to the second power, it works for 3 to the third power. And since it works for 3 to the third power, it works for 3 to the fourth power, and so on and so forth. And it continues until any finite domino is knocked down, or until any finite power of 3 is odd. So the base case, n equals 1, is obviously true, because 3 is odd. Now, we'll prove that if it's true for k, it's true for k plus 1. We can assume that 3 to the k is odd, because we can assume that 3 to the k is odd. And then, since odd times odd is odd, 3 times 3 to the k is also odd, which is the same as 3 to the k plus 1. So 3 to the k plus 1 is odd as well. And so, since we proved both parts of the induction, we've proved it. Hopefully this example makes sense. If it didn't, you should rewatch this section because you'll need to have a solid understanding of induction to get the next part, which is Cauchy, indu Cauchy induction. Induction is powerful and all, and I could make a whole video on it, hint, 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 but it alone isn't enough to prove the AMGM inequality. And so we'll need induction's stronger cousin, Cauchy induction. It's kind of obscure because it's only used to prove the AMGM inequality, but it's cool. So we'll start by proving the base case again, but instead of just proving the term plus 1, we can prove it for double the term. And so we know that this is true for all powers of 2. But we don't just want to prove it for powers of 2, we want to prove it for all integers. And so we can prove that given it's true for the term, it's also true for the term minus 1. And so, since 4 is true, then 3 is true. And since 8 is true, 7 is true. And since 7 is true, 6 is true. And since 6 is true, 5 is true. And we can keep doing this until we fill all the gaps between the powers of 2. And so we've proven it for all positive integers. 
Now, now we have to use this. There are three things we need to prove. The base case, given it's true for k, it's true for 2k, and given it's true for k, it's true for k minus 1. Let's start with the base case. Remember from the beginning that that works for 2? So that's actually our whole base case. Okay, this is where it gets kind of messy, just as a warning. So let's start by looking at what we want to prove. We'll only look at the left-hand side for now. We can split the left side into two parts, each with k terms, the arithmetic mean from a1 to ak, and the arithmetic mean from a cables 1 to a2k. And then, since we assume that this is true for, a, for k terms, we can apply the AMG inequality for k terms to get the red inequality and the green inequality. So now, using those inequalities, we can replace the red with the red, and the, the red with the red, and the green with the green. And now we get this inequality. And then, looking at the right side, this side, we can use the AMGM in a case for 2, which is a plus b over 2 is greater than or equal to the square root of ab. And then we can replace a and b with the red and green parts, which gives us this blue inequality. And then getting rid of the middle part, we get this mess. And then to simplify the right-hand side, we can put the kth roots together, because they're both the kth roots, and then we get the 2kth root. And now we can join the left-hand side back together um, to get the a arithmetic mean of a1 to a2k is greater than or equal to the geometric mean, mean of a1 to a2k. So this means that if it's true for k, it's true for 2k. So we have it to be true for all powers of 2. So now we have to do the next part. Given it's true for k, it's true for k minus 1. We know for a fact that the AMGM inequality works for k terms because that's what we assume. So let's manipulate this to get the AMGM inequality for k minus 1 terms. Let's replace 8k with the average of all the previous a's. Now, to simplify the left-hand side, let's put the whole numerator into one fraction instead of a whole number plus a fraction. Now, we can combine the two denominators to get one denominator of k times k minus 1. And then, we can combine like terms on the top, because both parts of the top have a1 plus a2 plus a3 through a k minus 1. So we can combine like terms to get k times a1 plus a2 plus a3 through a k minus 1. And then, we can cancel out the k's on both the numerator, numerator and the denominator, to get a1 plus a2 plus a3 through a k minus 1 over k minus 1. And this is just the arithmetic mean for k minus 1 numbers. So this is, we're, we're on the right track. So now let's put that into the equation we had from before. Square roots are annoying, so let's raise this to the kth power. And we can divide both sides by this because it's on both sides. So now we have this raised to the k minus 1 power. And then we can put the square root back, so we can take the k minus 1 root of both sides. And this just happens to be the AMGM inequality for k minus 1 terms. So we've proven that if it's true for k, it's true for k minus 1. And that's it, because now that we've proven both things, the Cauchy, indu the Cauchy induction is fulfilled and we're done. Yay! Alright, this is the summary of what we've done. First, we proved the case with only two numbers. Then we looked at what induction is and proved a different theorem as an example. Then we looked at what Cauchy induction is, and finally we used the Cauchy induction by proving the base case, which was already proven because it's the case with 2. Given it's true for k, it's mu it must be true for 2k, and given it's true for k, it must be true for k minus 1. And that's it! If you like this video, consider clicking the like button and subscribing so I can make more videos. Anyways, see you later!